The Eastern Orthodox Church is the most conservative form of Christianity by far. Is that a good thing? Well, it's complicated. Hey guys, welcome back to Kingdom Craft, where I build this big church in Minecraft while I talk about Christianity, and it looks like there's an Enderman who's showing up to church. Today I'm going to be talking about Eastern Orthodoxy, and why it's really the most conservative form of Christianity, and why there are some good uh, things that come from that, but why I'm still not- oh, did I look at this Enderman? Oh. But why I'm still not Eastern Orthodox, because um, there are some problems, and some of the problems stem from that fact. Okay, so what do I mean by the most conservative? So, a, lo a lot of times when we think of conservative Christians, we think of, you know, like, Baptist evangelicals. And in, in some sense, they're conservative, like, politically, they're the most likely to vote Republican. And um, they are very conservative on certain social issues. But in a more deeper theological sense, they're really not conservative at all, because they're not traditional. Um, Baptists, in their theology, are the opposite of traditional. They think that uh, we need to sort of depart from tradition and just say whatever we personally think the Bible says, even if it goes against all tradition. So in, in a Baptist view, in a modern evangelical view, if you are fully convinced the Bible teaches something, that's what you should believe, even if it goes against church tradition. Um, now the orthodoxy is at the complete opposite end of that spectrum, um, thinking that whatever the tradition is, that's what you should believe, even if you think the Bible says something different, then you're just wrong, you're misinterpreting it, because the church is a divine institution and is always right about the Bible. Um, that's, that's the orthodox view, and then there are a bunch of different views in between, so... Um, we, when we think of churches that follow tradition, and even sometimes put tradition above the Bible, we normally think of Catholicism, but Orthodoxy does that even more than Catholicism. Catholicism sees kind of scripture and the church as on equal grounds, but, um, Orthodoxy sees, like, the church, like, the Bible, the authority of the Bible is basically subject to the authority of the church. Um, so everything Protestants don't like about Catholicism, for the most part, there are some exceptions like, you know, purgatory and stuff, but most of the things Protestants don't like about Catholicism is, like, even more extreme in Eastern Orthodoxy. That's why it's like, a lot of Protestants, because of, like, the historical grudge against Catholicism, say they'd rather be Orthodox than Catholic. Like, I once did a poll of my Instagram followers who are mostly Protestant, and the ones who are not are, like, evenly dispersed between Catholic and Orthodox. Um, and I asked them, like, would you rather be... A Roman Catholic or Eastern Orthodox, and like I think over two thirds of them said they'd rather be Ro uh, Eastern Orthodox, which surprised me. I mean, it didn't surprise me, but I don't think it makes sense because um, Roman Catholicism is still a lot more similar to Protestantism than Eastern Orthodoxy is, and a lot of people um, don't don't seem to understand that. Like compared to Eastern Orthodoxy, Roman Catholicism is kind of Protestant. They don't follow tradition quite as strictly as the Eastern Orthodox do. They, they still follow it pretty strictly. Of course, they follow it more strictly than Protestants. And within Protestantism, there are more traditional Protestants, and there are less traditional Protestants. Baptists fall under the less traditional Protestants. Um, Presbyterians like me and like um, Lutherans and Anglicans follow under the more traditional Protestants. I know there are some modern Presbyterians who act like less traditional, but I would personally just say they're not being consistent with uh, classical Presbyterian teaching. Um, and of course, Protestantism has um, every Protestant branch has like a a wing that's like radically progressive that. Uh, progresses way beyond any Christianity at all, both theologically and um, socially progressive, but we're not really talking about those in this video. So in this video, we're talking about um, Eastern Orthodoxy, and what does it mean that they're that they're really conservative? So I we, we've established that they always follow tradition. So how, like, I can, even those of you who are like, when I, those of you who are, would identify as conservative, when I said Eastern Orthodoxy is super conservative, you were probably like, oh good, that's great, but then when I said it means they always follow tradition no matter what, you're like, yeah, I can see why that can be a problem, because sometimes the traditional view on something isn't necessarily the biblical view. Um, and Presbyterians really have a, have a balance of, a, ba a balanced view of tradition, I think. Like, 
We're not like the Baptists because we think tradition matters and it is authoritative in some sense, but we're not Catholic or Orthodox because we don't um, put tradition on equal grounds with scripture. Well, we do believe in sola scriptura, but sola scriptura was never intended to mean we only use the Bible and nothing else. It means the Bibles are only like infallible authority. It's our only ultimate authority. Um, but um, church tradition is and church like history, church councils, those are still uh, lower authorities. Um, lower authorities in the Bible that we still need to like learn from and stuff. So, Eastern Orthodoxy will even sometimes, like, they won't even consider, like, is this biblical if it's a traditional thing. So, it's not, it's not that they don't read the Bible and learn from it, they always do, but they never question if any of their views are biblical. The first time this really um, sort of came to a head was... Uh, in the split between Orthodoxy and Catholicism, and this is an example of how Catholics are a bit less radically traditional than the Eastern Orthodox. So, um, you may know of this filioque controversy. Um, that's the difference between, that's something the Eastern Orthodox disagree with all Western Christians on, and by Western Christians I mean Catholics and all Protestants, like Anglicans, Lutherans, Presbyterians, Baptists, Methodists, it's basically Orthodox against everyone else. So what is the filioque? So the Nicene Creed, um, our version of the Nicene Creed, the Western version says, I believe in the Holy Spirit who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Their version, this is the only way in which the, the versions of the Nicene Creed are different, everything else is exactly the same. Their version of the Nicene Creed says, I believe in the Holy Spirit who proceeds from the Father. And they don't have the and the Son part. And the Son, in Latin, is just one word, filioque and that's why there's a controversy of should that word be there. Now, the Orthodox will always point out that wasn't originally there, and they're right. Um, in the original version of the Nicene Creed, the filioque wasn't there, and it was added later. The reason we added it um, is because it's biblical. All the same reasons that we have biblically for saying the Spirit proceeds from the Father, for example, the Bible calls the Holy Spirit the Spirit of the Father, those same exact reasons can be applied to the Son as well, because the Holy Spirit is also called the Spirit of Christ. So, um, that's why the Filioque was added, because there were, like, very, very strong biblical arguments for saying the Holy Spirit proceeds from the from the Son as well as the Father. The Eastern North, that, that was what the Western Church, keep in mind, the Catholic Church was saying, um, this is biblical, so we need to add it. The Eastern Church was like, well, no, it's it's not in the Creed, so we shouldn't change the Creed. And the Catholic Church was like, but it's biblical. And then the Orthodox Church was like, but it's not in the Creed. And at this point, they were still sort of the same church, the same organization, but that this was, most Orthodox people I've talked to have said this was the biggest reason for the, the Great Schism in 1054 between East and West, even though there were other issues. They would say this is, like, the big one, the, the, the like, defining issue that, um, sort of colored all the other ones. Um, so that was the first example. So if you'll notice the Western Church, which is now like sort of the Roman Catholic Church, even though the Western Church back then wasn't identical to the Roman Catholic Church, it's it sort of evolved into what we now have as the Roman Catholic Church. They were acting like the Protestants in that debate. They were saying, we need to do this because it's biblical, and the um, Eastern Orthodox were like, no, it's not in the creed. Now, they raise a, they raise a good point. If we say that the Nicene Creed is inerrant, I, I do believe the Nicene Creed is inerrant, then why change it? So, the original version of the Nicene Creed wasn't wrong. It's not wrong to say the Spirit proceeds from the Father. Now, if it had said the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and not the Son, then I would think that would be wrong. But it just, it was just something that was left out. And the, um, what, I would, what I would say um, when debating Orthodox on this issue is neither of us use the truly original version of the Nicene Creed. Um, what we have as the Nicene Creed, both East and West, it's really like the Niceo Constantinopolitan Creed, because the first ecumenical church council was the Council of Nicaea. But the second one was the, and the Council of Nicaea um, wrote the Nicene Creed, but the second one was the Council of Constantinople. And they added the paragraph of the Nicene Creed um, about the Holy Spirit, and that's where it says the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son if you're in a Western church. So, yeah, that's why I say, like, the, the, both of us use a creed that's been modified. If the church wrote the creed, the same church has the authority to modify it. 
And even the Eastern Orthodox would have to admit that's true in some sense, because the creed that even they use is still a modified version of the Nicene Creed. So, um, yeah, that's, that's one reason, that's one way in which arguing purely, like, from tradition saying this is the way it's always been and we can never change it, that's one example of why that doesn't really work. Um, even though tradition is still very important, it, it doesn't need to be the end-all be-all. Um, another thing is that really Orthodox Christians have the exact opposite problems that Protestants have. It's like all the problems we have, they don't have, and all the problems they have, we don't have. Um, sorry. One problem in Protestantism is not respecting tradition. On the mainline Protestant end, you have theological liberalism, just forms churches that totally disregard the claims of Christianity entirely and don't even really believe in God. On the evangelical end of Protestantism, you have just churches that might be conservative but are not traditional at all in their worship style, in their theology, in their music, all that. Um, Orthodoxy doesn't have that problem. Orthodoxy is always faithful to tra tradition, so that's a problem Protestants have. It's never a problem that the Eastern Orthodox have. Their problem is that of all the, like, this is the main reason I'm not Eastern Orthodox. Of all the forms of Christianity, the Eastern Orthodox Church has had the least of a positive impact on the world. So, the Western Catholic Church basically invented Western civilization. Basically, everything we appreciate about Western civilization, you know, like modern hospitals, universities, um, just even the Western family structure, like, um, so much that we just think of as a normal part of our society came from the Western Catholic Church, and the Catholic Church is the reason that Western civilization ended up, like, advancing so far above every everything else. And that's still why Western Europe, um, historically speaking, has made way more achievements than Eastern Europe, because, um, like... Catholicism and later Protestantism, I'd, I'd say Protestantism did this even to an even greater extent, um, had a really profound effect on the um, countries economically, socially, and culturally, and ca caused them all to advance. You could really take any country in Europe, I know Europe's mostly atheist now, but every country in Europe, for the most part, is historically Protestant, Catholic, or Orthodox. So the countries in Europe that are doing the best economically, like Sweden, um, Denmark, the Netherlands, those are the ones that were historically Protestant. Um, Protestantism helped even more than Catholicism. You know, this whole, like, Protestant work ethic really emphasized, you know, individual hard work and, and free markets, which was the best economically for countries. So um, Protestantism, especially with their emphasis on, you know, individually glorifying God in everything you do, um, that had a profound effect on the, like, societies where Protestantism was. So even though Europe is now no longer that religious, like, really anywhere, um, you can still see the effects that Protestantism had. Catholicism had similar effects, just to a lesser extent. So historically Catholic countries are like France and Italy, not doing uh, as well as the historically Protestant countries, but still very well and still had made a ton of uh, contributions to society historically. Now, the European countries that are historically the poorest and still kind of are, are the ones that were historically Eastern Orthodox. Now, this would be a slam dunk case against Eastern Orthodoxy and for Protestantism, but there's another side to this coin. Although the countries that were historically Orthodox are the least economically prosperous, they are the ones who have not fallen to secular leftism. So you can see, just by looking at a map of Europe, how the conservatism of Eastern Orthodoxy has had both positive and negative effects on those countries. So I would say, because they were so stuck in tradition, they never really made big societal developments, and that's why Eastern European countries are not quite as economically advanced as Western European countries. Like, even take two countries that are basically identical except one's Catholic and one's Orthodox. Take, I don't know, Poland versus Russia, or another example is um, Serbia versus Croatia. Croatia's Catholic, Serbia's Orthodox. Other than that, they're almost identical. 
but Croatia is doing so much better. Poland is Catholic, Russia is Orthodox, but Poland is doing so much better. So, in I historically, if you if you study like what the Catholic Church has done for society, which is a ton of great stuff, you can see why um, the Catholic Church has had a bit more willingness to be adventurous and like experimental in the things they do more into studying science definitely than the eastern church and and to this day the catholic church is um the church most committed to studying science definitely more than protestant churches um but the other side of that coin is that because they were less tradition uh, committed to tradition they sort of um abandoned traditional religion more quick more quickly than the orthodox or i guess another way you could put it is, um, like, a lot of atheists will use countries like Sweden and Denmark, which are very prosperous and also very atheist, to argue for why atheism is good. They're like, look, atheism causes prosperity. What I always say in response is, no, it's it's the other way around. It's that prosperity causes atheism. When a society is very prosperous, they forget about um, uh, a need for God. And I think that's, that's probably the best explanation of what happened in the Protestant countries. I think... Protestantism for like Northern Europe was basically too good for its own good. It helped basically it helped society too much. It helped society so much that it, society got really wealthy and prosperous. And as a result, the people got kind of spoiled and irreligious. Whereas Orthodoxy, um, the commitment to tradition helped people um, stay religious, which is a good thing. We we want people to be religious and. The most religious countries in Europe are the Orthodox countries, but on the other, the other side of that coin is those countries were never super prosperous places to begin with. So that yeah, that's why there's there's two sides to that whole coin. So um, because of that, is it better to um, for a religious belief to help society, but then not? end up having any long-lasting presence, or is it better to be very traditional and basically stay the same, but not help society nearly as much as it could? Now, because I'm a Protestant, you know what I'm going to say. I do think it's possible um, for Protestantism to, like, remain. We just need to be more committed to tradition. Like, Protestantism has always had the problem. Like, um... Even, even among the more high church Protestants like Lutherans or Anglicans, there's still a bit of an issue with um, maintaining traditional beliefs. But I think that um, the hyper-conservatism of Eastern Orthodoxy, even though there's it creates a lot of good, I think fundamentally it makes the Orthodox Church a bit too rigid, if you know what I mean, a bit too... Um, resistant to change. And another issue I have with the Orthodox Church is that um, it can be very nationalistic. And the Orthodox Church is always very divided because there's like the uh, Russian Orthodox Church and the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, which obviously really don't like each other because, you know, there's a war going on right now. Um, and this is not new. It's like Orthodox countries have always, you know, occasionally fought with each other. And when that happens, it's like, the church is very divided. And I've heard even an Orthodox uh, priest, uh, Father Josiah Trenman or whatever, um, comment on how this is a really big problem in Orthodoxy that needs to change all this division and stuff. So, but that that's kind of, I don't know if that issue is directly related to um, this issue. It might be a, a separate issue, a separate problem with Orthodoxy. But yeah, in, in summary, um, there's a lot to respect about Orthodoxy. I, I, I see them as brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, but their hyper-conservatism makes them kind of rigid, and, yeah, like I said, doesn't contribute as much to the kingdom of God as I think it could. And there's also a reason that Orthodox, the numbers of Orthodox people are very tiny and compared to Catholic and Protestant. But yeah, so yeah, that's just my thoughts on Orthodoxy. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye.